Hey everyone, it's Dick from Nick's Crossing. Welcome back to the train room for another great tutorial today. Today we're going to be tearing apart and installing an awesome rail sounds package in this Williams E7 BNL. So here we go, guys. All aboard. Alright, guys, so uh, I actually put out a video a few weeks ago about which locomotive should I upgrade, and I wanted your guys' help. Yes, you, the viewers, the fans of Nick's Crossing for your help on which locomotive, and you guys chose, for the most part, the E7. It's pretty close to the Baldwin Sharks, third place the BL2. Amtrak got some buzz, not a whole lot. It was a P42, which I do plan on upgrading um, right after the BL2. So, you guys chose the E7, and here we go. So, this is part one of two. We're gonna be doing the Rail Sounds package. Now, uh, another comment to make, this engine will be conventional controlled as of right now. There's tons of space in this locomotive. I just want to keep it simple, uh, just run it with rail sounds around the layout, just have fun with it. So at this time, it will not have a TMCC upgrade, but in the future, maybe. We'll have to see. I'm not too uh, set on that right now. Price of boards have gone up a little bit here and there, all that fun stuff. But anyways, uh, this is an aftermarket board set we'll be putting in this locomotive. I'll show you guys the kit in a second. The seller's name is Paper Booth. He sells all kinds of crazy stuff like hooter whistles like I purchased before, multi-sound diesel like this unit, all kinds of great sounding, uh, mostly rail sounds too, but they still sound great, they look great, they're just simple, very simple kits. And there's tons of space in this E7. I mean, there's a lot of room. <laughs> and this um, is a Williams dual motor, just runs conventional and has that very simple uh, horn. If you hit the uh, horn button, it plays the, what's it, too long, short, and a long. And then the bell sounds like someone taking a hammer to some sheet metal. Not very appealing. Uh, it's not like the Sound Blast, what, Sound Blast 3 has like the... Uh, engine idle and all that. Now nah, this is very simple. So when they give this engine a beautiful voice, it's a beautiful uh, shell and the shell just pops off of this. So there it is. And the lights are uh, soldered in. So the shell just pops off just like an end scale locomotive from Bachman. So very simple. So uh, give me a second guys. I'm going to get you uh, top side on the bench and we're going to tear this locomotive apart and uh, install the awesome rail sounds. All right, guys, so here is the kit, right in a nice little uh, bag here. And um, this seller makes it very easy. These are, like I said, all aftermarket kits from Lionel, and he puts them together for you. So Paper Booth, you're the man. So here it is, Modern Multi-Note Diesel, says it right on the bag right there. Um, I'm doing a modern voice, or I guess you'd call it Multi-Note Modern, because this is a passenger engine. I don't want it to have like a single note horn. Something kind of pretty. Now, here we go. There's your uh, rail sounds board. Very, very simple. Um, it's got this. This is warning you, I think, of the battery. Yeah. So use care um, because they're just soldered to the board. So you don't want to pull those out. You have to re solder to a board. Here's our speaker. Very important right there. Now, these are. Uh, magnet plus optional for rail sounds jumper and then there's your magnets right there this is your uh, chug switch as I call it it's a little uh, magnetic switch right here if it focuses there it is so when the magnet passes by this switch you'll hear either a chuff or you'll hear like an idle sound or the engine revving up uh, your revolutions pretty much and that's why you get these two magnets right here uh, with this other piece I'm not going to use this other piece, the jumper. We don't need that yet. Um, I am going to use these little magnets right there. All right, guys, to install that rail sounds board, I've actually attached the speaker to kind of place this in here and get it where it needs to be situated. Now, I added an adhesive square right here, which I'm going to use this poker tool to find um, the hole underneath because there is a hole in the frame. There we go. These tools are really useful, these like pokers and things like that, surgical tools, very, very handy. Now here's the rail sounds board. We're actually going to mount it. Uh, one of these holes is tapped, it's threaded, so we can actually just run the screw that it came with underneath like this. Run it through the foam, and the foam's gonna help hold that up. And then we're gonna take our rail sounds board right here and run it upside down see a lot of wires in the way sorry about that and um, right there 
I'm going to hand tighten this first and just tighten her in. Now the reason why I put that adhesive square is to create an insulation or insulator between the board and the frame just in case that, uh, I don't know, we got a short or something like that. Short runs through the frame. I don't want these transistors shorting out, so just to be safe. Now that's in there. That's installed right there. Look at that, nice and clean. Uh, this can kind of move side to side just for positioning. And now we're stuck with a bunch of wires. So <laughs> here's our speaker, uh, speaker wire. For now, I'm actually going to put that back here. All right, guys, now it's time to wire up our Rail Sounds board, and it is only two wires. Yes, just two wires. That's how easy this is. We have two wires coming off our track power distributor off of the E unit or reverse unit board from Williams. And then here's our Rail Sounds board safely mounted in the shell, in the frame, all that good stuff. Not touching metal on metal, everything's insulated. Here's our red wire to the red wire right here. So these two wires are going to be soldered together. Then we have this black wire right here. And then the black wire, if I can find it, it's hiding from me. Here it is, over here. So that's it. And after that, this Rail Sounds board should work. Now first, we're going to slide some heat shrink right here over top this red wire so we can uh, shrink everything up, make it look nice and clean. No shorts, none of that stuff. We don't want any of that to happen. All right, and then we're gonna do red on red. So these two red wires right here, I'm gonna twist those together. Make sure they're nice and tight. And then we're gonna take our handy dandy soldering iron and take a really small bit of solder and just run a bead over these two wires without dripping on anything, anything like that. Just real quick. Boom, done. Then we're gonna fold this wire over like that. You fold it in the direction that you want the heat shrink to go so you're not fighting it. And we're gonna pull the heat shrink over top. Boom. Done. And then we're going to take our soldering iron, do the poor man's heat shrink gun. Just use a little bit of solder, solder iron heat right there. And boom. That one's done. Looks professional. Look at that. Ready to roll. Next, we're going to do the black wire. So take a little bit of heat shrink, slide it over first. Make sure you don't forget that. It's a pain in the butt to undo it and you know, you could have the best solder joint in the world. You got to go back and fix it. It's annoying. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience. I've done it before. So here we go. And then black on black again down here. And I don't want to cut any of this excess wire off the rail sounds board. You could make it a little, a little bit cleaner, but you know, you might want to remove this board, put it in a different locomotive or something like that. You need some, uh, some wire to work with. All right, real thin bead of solder running up. There we go. Boom, done. And then we're gonna fold the wire over in the direction that we wanna go in. So that way, right there, slide the heat shrink right over top, professionale. Here we go. And we're take our poor man's heat gun right over top. Just like, there we go, just like a repair shop would do. Boom, done. Now the fun part, we can test out the locomotive. So we're not gonna worry about this, this is our battery backup. I'm gonna leave the uh, insulator on there. Um, this is for your battery backup, so when you start her up, it plays like the uh, startup sounds, and then if you lose power on your track, will go to the backup battery circuit. It does not have to be a rechargeable battery. I just currently do not have any 9 volts in the studio. They're in other locomotives. So uh, we'll fold that under there, but we have a nice space underneath our, um, our circuit tree here for a 9 volt battery. All right guys, so I've been troubleshooting this board for about an hour or so. I was like, why isn't this thing idling? It's in low voltage and everything. What's going on here? So I found out through the instructions, 
you did not have to use the magnetic switch. It was for sensitivity, and I'm assuming that the switch that I was given with this kit may be faulty. Um, this is a great seller. I'm sure if I reached out to him, he'd send me a new one. But I found out you don't need to. And the instructions, look at this big book. They give you this whole book of instructions right here with pictures and everything. So this seller is fantastic in my opinion. Um, if you go to, to you look, it gives you the schematic of the board, where everything is, and nine volt battery, here it is. Here's your magnetic switch pickup. Uh, it's called a reed switch, my, my correction there. So yeah, you don't have to use it, it says it right here. Uh, unlike steam locomotives, the use of the reed switch and magnets on a diesel installation is optional. After unplugging the reed switch, the soundboard will still respond to changes in track voltage, varying the diesel sounds appropriately. However, if you desire more responsive changes due to motion, reed switch, um, oh, read on for tips installing the reed switch, which gives you this beautiful little diagram on, um, I don't know, it's like a tender truck. So we're going to ditch the reed switch, and listen to this, guys. I got her all plugged in, so listen to this. She idles and sounds great little Lionel accessory transformer right here. Let's give her some juice. Put her in neutral. There we go. And that's what we want, that beautiful idle. So if I kick on the power about 25%, probably right around seven or eight volts. And then she idles back down. But yeah, I think it sounds great. I think this is all ready for reassembly. I don't need to mess around with these magnets. And this may look really scary, guys, but Williams Engines, this goes back together with just one screw going right through the motor mount right here. So I'm going to get this all together, and then we're going to run it, you know, on the layout for a test run. All right, guys, so I did a test run with the E7, and I figured out that the speaker needs to be mounted face down towards the shell. And what I did, I actually drilled some holes in the back here through the uh, sheet metal there. And this thing sounds great, nice and loud. You're seeing some residue here from the uh, contact cleaner I used to clean up all the metal shavings. Now the best thing to do, so you don't make a mess with metal shavings, is if you take one of these little uh, shop magnets while you're drilling and hold that next to your drill bit. You can actually see there's some uh, metal residue on there. This will suck up all your metal shavings as you're drilling through. A little drop of oil and then when you're done use some contact cleaner to get rid of all that oil that you used to drill the holes. Alright guys, this is actually day two of filming this Rail Sounds upgrade video. Just got done with our Monday Run Day live stream which is every Monday night 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time we run and talk about trains. It's a lot of fun. If you guys haven't checked it out definitely encourage you to check it out. And There's also the replay. They're a lot of fun too. So anyways, we ran the E7 tonight on the live stream. You guys really enjoyed her for all you guys who saw her. And uh, here she is. She's still a little warm, <laughs> but she sounds great. Now, a couple things before we run her for this video. If you put her on the track and you give her a little bit of power, she idles and starts up. Sounds great. But because it's a Williams locomotive, it's not drawing a lot of power like a, um, an AC motor would run, you know, like a Pullmore or something like that. So the locomotive still thinks it's in neutral. This Rail Sounds card, according to the instructions, works off of voltage differential. So if you give it a lot of power, the Rail Sounds are going to crank up. It's going to idle and then go into notch one, two, three, four. You'll hear the RPMs crank. And then when you slow her down with the throttle, the RPMs will lessen back to idle. So that's a really cool feature, but the problem is Williams locomotives run on DC cam motors that do not require a lot of power after your initial startup. The initial startup actually kicks about, I think it's two or three amps, and then it, it's enough to click the reverse board to forward. Uh, Williams locomotives run forward first, not neutral or reverse. It just give it power, it's gonna go forward, and then when you stop it, it's gonna go in neutral and then reverse. So uh, it's one thing to keep in mind about Williams. One way I could correct this, is putting the reed switch back in. The reed switch that came with this kit was defective. I tested it. It was uh, normally closed, so it wasn't operating. It needs to be a normally open switch. Every time the magnet passes by, it's supposed to close the switch. So it's one little problem. 
So I may put a new read switch back in. I have spares on my desk. We'll have to see how that goes. But right now, honestly, I don't mind it. It has a beautiful sounding horn. And if you sit her on the track, uh, you get these awesome like uh, idle sounds, air compressor. The bell sounds fantastic too. It sounds right for this locomotive. And it, it's just great. So we're not getting all those crazy RPM sounds, but maybe after installing the smoke unit, it's gonna draw a little bit more power. We'll have to see how it goes. I'll, maybe I'll put it in line with the motors. Uh, so it does draw a little bit more power. We'll have to see. But let's go track side so you guys can hear and see what I'm talking about. All right guys, our E7's on the track. So let's give her some power. So just to let you know, you need a battery in there for that startup and shutdown sequence. If not, it's just going to totally shut out and the sounds are just going to stop when the track power is shut off. Also, if you hit a dead spot in the tracks without a battery, the sounds will cut out, then they'll come back. I actually have a few locomotives that need batteries still. Uh, I just haven't put them in there because they are command control locomotives only. So I'm like, why do I need the battery? You know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, if you're running them in TMCC mode or command control. So yeah, this locomotive does need a battery. There's a uh, really cheap 9 volt thrown in there. Uh, it'll be totally fine. Also, these locomotives do not have recharging circuits like Protosound 1, 2, and 3 locomotives have. It's just a you know a normal alkaline battery thrown in there. You can use rechargeables, but just remember your battery will not charge while in that circuit. It's just for power during the shutdown, startup, and also dead spots so you don't lose sounds. I think this kit went together pretty well and I'm gonna mess around with that reed switch and if I do I'll let you guys know for sure and um, we'll do a little bit of a compare and contrast but honestly I think it's okay as is. I don't need it you know going super fast. It's got that beautiful sounding horn and bell package in there. Um, you get the air sounds, all kinds of stuff, a lot of idles. It's just a really Simple, beautiful sounding locomotive. We'll have to see. I'll play around with the uh, reed switch. I'll let you guys know if I add one in there. I'm going to go back to putting a magnet on the flywheel for that. We'll have to see. Um, just make sure the circuit works correctly as well. I don't know. The seller is pretty awesome. I haven't had any issues with him before. And like I said, if I reached out to him, he'd probably send me a switch. But it's all right. I've got plenty of reed switches in stock and tons and tons of magnets. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this simple rail sounds upgrade with just two wires you're rocking and rolling with a whole new sound package that's way better than that you know you hit the switch once 
and you get that nasty sounding bell. This is so much better. And next, in part two, we're going to be installing a smoke unit system in this locomotive. I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to do it. This is Nick's Crossing. Anything's possible. And guys, never give up on your projects and dreams on your railroads. If I can do it, you guys can do it. Stay positive. Definitely, this is so easy to do. I promise, you know, and I'm always learning, always learning from you guys as well. There's so many experts out there and so many guys that um, always reach out and everything. I really do appreciate it. And we're all learning together. And that's an awesome part of this hobby. But anyways, if you guys are new to this channel, always consider subscribing. Leaving a thumbs up and a comment really does help out the channel. Make sure to hit that bell icon so you don't miss content just like this. And check out other tutorials on the tutorials uh, playlist so you don't miss videos just like this. Until next time, everyone, happy railroading. This is Nick saying, see you next time. See you guys.